Hello again everyone, welcome. Um, just a forewarning today, some of my neighbors have decided to play ball and barbecue right outside my window during the only time I have to record, so there might be noises. <laughs> anyway, on with the show. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be going to either Novaria or um, I think it's called Pharos. Um, but before we do any of that, we also need to go and do some shopping and see if we can get some armor. And I also want to run around the ship and find, you know, find if there are any new dialogue choices or, you know, Liara is now with us, so she might have things to say. So well, before I do anything on this deck, I'll go down and see if there's anyone below deck. Maybe they have something interesting to say. Like these guys over here sitting at the table. Nope, generic crew who are not interested in talking to me, but Kaiden's here. Hey, what you got to say? Anything you need, Commander? This is going to be the same dialogue that we got from last time. Ah, let's try anyway. Looking for personal input. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Oh, please, speak your mind. Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. Ooh. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. Wrong this with what? Saren is looking Liara? for records on oh, some kind of Saren. galactic extinction. But we can't get backup from the council? Yeah. Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. I am completely in agreement with you. The council really should be, you know a little more freaked out that things are happening. They're very calm about it all, especially that Turian one. I don't trust him at all. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... But they're aliens. I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. I mean, it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. <laughs> cute way to look at it or an old-fashioned view you know he's looking out with wide eyes wanting to want to see things and explore and all that and now it's just boring and well I won't say settled but yeah you way to look at it well well you're a romantic did you sign on for the dream Malenko secure man's future in space yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves or... Or a man you know, that he loves. For justice. Or that, I guess. Maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. Brain camp, I'm not huh? I'm looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in BOT. All right, what are they training for? Just be ready. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics yeah, could be compiled. That, <laughs> that sounds about there right. There are worse results of accidental <laughs> Overly ver verbose way of saying it beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Oh, my accidental. Yeah, he's got that in scare quotes there. Worst results of accidental exposure. Mmm. You doubt it was accidental? It's a survival rate damn corporations. God, that sounds about right. Corporations doing accidental exposure just to get more kids with, uh, you know, super soldier abilities. Regardless of the fact that many of them get a bunch of brain tumors along the way. Um... Do you think that you were accidentally exposed? Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. <sighs> They just come by, they take you, and... Alright. 
sounds rough or you know we're gonna investigate oh yeah okay <clears throat> so jump zero I assume that is because you're out on jump zero and the word jump in it it must be a space station jump zero is Gagarin station right yep what's it like yeah that's the official name biggest and farthest facility we had for decades right on the termination shock the outer edge of the solar system it's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Mm -hmm. Gagarin Station. Where have I heard that before? I mean, Gagarin. I feel like that's... Oh god, it's been so long since I was in astronomy courses. I feel like that refers to like a position somewhere in space. It might be like, you know, just the edge of the solar system, which would make sense for why they're calling it that, you know, Gagarin Station. But I think, no, it was because it was in um, uh, Alpha Centauri, the civilization type future sci-fi Civ game, <laughs> which was very good, and if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. Uh, friends, did you have friends? There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together. A little, a little circle, yeah. <laughs> We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Mm. Time to talk, then. Time to get physical, then. <laughs> oh, God, should I say that? Uh, would that offend him if I implied that he was uh, bumping up on some of his um, classmates? You were all teenagers. I'm sure you found other ways to occupy the time. I'm not the sort who does that kind of thing, Commander. Not lightly, anyway. Oh. There was a girl yeah. I spent a lot of time with, but we kept our clothes on. Rana. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. I think you'd have liked her. Ah. Huh. Did you love her? So, we can start to probe into the whole relationship aspect of the, uh, the whole game mod thing we've got. Alright, time to probe. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Or maybe the fact that you were interested in guys. I don't know. I, I know bisexual people exist. <laughs> I'm just being a little bit facetious. Um, intentional exposures. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Mm. Is, I wonder if Kinetics is still around at the present point. Maybe they're just back on Earth or something. Because I don't think that I've seen any any items produced by them. Then again, if they're all in, uh, like, if they're in the production, so to speak, of biotics, then I suppose I wouldn't really get... Oh, wait, no, actually I could get, like, the, um, uh, what do you call it? The little, uh... A little thing that you have on your arm that does all your biotics abilities. Maybe they produce some of those. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. But I'm interested. But we have to depend on each other in combat. I like knowing what kind of man I have at my back. <laughs> you, uh make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? <laughs> I didn't say I did this for the whole crew. We should talk again. I'll, uh... I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah. I'd like that. Ooh, he's open to it. Ha-ha! <laughs> ha Alright. Uh, who's next? Doctor, I think I'm lovesick. I need a checkup. Yes, Commander? 
Is there something you need? <laughs> this is probably going to be the exact same thing I've already asked her, so if so, I'm just going to skip it. Goodbye, Commander. Uh, it was exactly the same thing. Oh, Liara. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Well, I mean, you did just have kind of like a, a traumatizing event where you were sort of almost murdered and uh, kidnapped and you were also caught up in that big field thing, whatever that was, so, you know, yeah. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She's just great, isn't she? You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. And if that means killing Benezia, I have a feeling that we're going to have to fight her eventually. She's probably going to have like some kind of crazy space magic powers. She's going to be a space witch. I can see it now. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Hmm, I'd like to talk about you. So if we if we do that, uh, I don't want to get all flirty with her, so... Anyway, I'm curious about who she is, though. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs. Unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. See, that seems very, uh, very flirty. You must get lonely. But then again, it could just be, well, it must be lonely out there. I really wish that there were, there were a mod for this that would just tell you exactly what you're actually going to say. So, uh, let's just do it. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes, I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers, but I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau, I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes, I just need to get away from other people. You know, I agree with you completely. That sounds great. <laughs> I'm like super introvert over here. Spend all my time at my house. People are like, what are you doing on the weekend? Nothing. That's why. I'd leave me alone. You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. Must have made her mad. Um, that's not foolish. All children rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. Uh -huh. You share the wisdom of the matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Benezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. <laughs> Don't try to study. I like her because she, you know, not, not to mention the whole kind of introvert, get away from people thing, but just... She's smart, and she's out there studying and learning things about the universe, and she seems pretty good. Now, if only she were a boy. Because <laughs> I know that she is one of the big love interests, because I've seen plenty of art of her and, you know, Shep and Fem Shep. <laughs> Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. 
I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I like her. She, she's got that just enough awkward, like, awkward nerd. She's pretty great. Okay, tell me about Benezia. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Hmm. Yeah, maybe she's not evil. Like, <laughs> maybe she's not evil. Maybe she is doing this for some reason. Like, there's... Although, I mean, in the cutscenes, she did have that evil look about her. She's... Who knows? They're probably just doing that to intentionally make her look evil. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Alright, how about your culture? I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. So they're like... I know I've mentioned Stellaris before. They're kind of like the Federation builders. They want to get out there and join everybody together. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Hmm. That... Hmm. Yeah, how does that make sense? <laughs> that kind of implies that they've got some... They have like a similar DNA structure or something, or what? Uh, okay, tell me how that's possible. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> okay. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Who was your father and or mother, I guess? Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Okay, so that it's possible for them to do it within their species. They don't have to choose someone from another species. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too 
ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Hmm. Why? Hmm. Why would they do that then? And then why'd she do it? Again, I want to go for the good answers. <laughs> Paragon. <laughs> Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. How do they deal with that? Since it's on the right, does that mean it's going to close the conversation? Because I do want to ask that. It's, it's an interesting concept. If they're so long-lived and their partners can often be short-lived. You Asari lived for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Hmm. Yeah, because I guess they do kind of delve into your memory and take that with them. Interesting. Uh... So, I wonder if she's supposed to be the, like, canonical relationship. Because... I don't know. She... I have a feeling she's going to be very well-developed as a character. Okay, I've already asked that. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Yeah, I bet she's going to be very well-developed. She's probably the canon relationship, and probably after Shepard dies, because I know that there are other games beyond like the trilogy. Maybe there are others that go beyond like into the future. I know there's Andromeda, but I don't know if it takes place before these games or if it takes place after these games. If it takes place after, maybe uh, Liara's still around and she's some kind of a... Uh... Oh yeah, this is just my room, isn't it? Maybe she's still around and she's going to be some kind of a point of reference to earlier games. I don't know. Let's go down and see if we can find our other pals and what they might have to say. 